Hello, Pastor Deborah here, and welcome again to another wonderful word of encouragement, spiritual teaching video for you. I'm recording today while it's thundering outside. It's early in the morning, and I have other things to do yet, but I wanted to get a couple of videos recorded. Now I'm working hard again. I took a little break from my recording. I'm getting back to it. Here in this word of encouragement for you, for this year, 2023, this word of encouragement is entitled, How is your Lord known? That's a good question. And we'll get into that in just a minute. But we want to give Pixabay a big thank you. This is their video that came from their free section. And I thank them. It's a wonderful ministry. We want to thank Zoom Pro. That's who I'm recording through. And I'm using a Blue Yeti microphone. And I'm using a attached camera. I am a very low budget, if I can, video recorder. I've had to learn so much over the last few years. Never thought I'd be out here in the galaxies, in the garden, teaching, talking on a computer, on a camera to you, and have other people listen. Yeah. So welcome to our time. We're here in the, spiritually in the Garden of Eden. That's right. And you who are watching on this YouTube channel, The Hidden Kingdoms, I want to say thank you for subscribing, commenting, make them nice comments. Now, I will respond back to you. But if they get kind of not nice or inappropriate, I will delete them, just so you know that. But you can ask me questions, and I'll answer you back. So here, in this word of encouragement, spiritual teaching video, someone, me, is asking you a question about your Lord. Do you know that you have a Lord? Do you even know what the word Lord means? It means owner, master, teacher, husband, ruler. Mm -hmm. That's right. And in many different ways, it means sustainer, mm -hmm. protector, judge, hero. Mm -hmm. Those are the good terms. But I want to ask you, King David, who we are following today, out of Psalms, the book in the Bible, I use the authorized King James Bible. He's going to help us answer that question. But first, let's open up with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you today for being here with us in spirit and in light. Thank you that you are coming out through light, out through and from Pastor Deborah. Father, I know that I am not the light that they're seeking. My words are your words. For another of us said it long ago, you are in me, I am in you. We are one, but we're two. It is your light that they are hearing and seeing. It is your words that they must listen to. It is their words that they must breathe in and implant in their spirit. It is you who they must listen to. So help us, Father, for you are Lord of the kingdom of heaven. You are King of King and Lord of Lords. And you are here to help us today and to teach us. We thank you in the name of Christ Jesus, your firstborn son, your lamb, and your offspring. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So let's get started, and thank you, Father, for hearing our prayer. Okay, we're going to go to Psalms 9, 16 through 20. Psalms was a book, it's in the Bible, which means book. And it was written by King David. King David was the second king of ancient Israel. 
and he was at first a shepherd. He used to stay out in the fields with his father's sheep, watching them and tending them, and being responsible, fighting off tigers and bears and wolves and even other humans who wanted to steal or kill the little lambs and sheep. He would look at the stars. He would talk to his God that he had heard about since his youth. Mm -hmm. So King David wrote this, and he, we're going to listen to King David talk to us so that you can answer this question. How is your Lord known? Verse Psalms 9, verse 16. The Lord of King David, of the Holy Bible, is known by the judgment which he executes. That tells us he's a judge, and he executes justice. He makes rulings. Mm -hmm. The wicked is snared in their walk of their own hands. So when this Lord of King David, that he discovered looking at the stars out in the fields with the sheep, way far away from his family, seeking, looking, searching, depending on for safety, protection, and guidance. He said that his Lord is known by the judgment which he executes, which he pronounces, which the court carries out. He's a judge of law, through law, by law. He's the final verdict. And he said the wicked is snared in the works of their own hands. When you do wicked things that go against the laws and the righteous judgments of this king, this judge's land, heaven, mm -hmm, you will be ensnared by your own work. Maybe your own words. Maybe not in this lifetime, but in another, maybe not while you're alive, but maybe the, your children will be ensnared by your your wickedness, your deeds, your actions. David is saying the, there are wicked people out there doing wicked things. And they have been brought before the Lord. I have taken many to the Lord judge of the universe, the judge of the kingdom of heaven, King David's Lord, and ask for a judgment. We are judged by what we do, what we say. There's a law that's over our spirit, our soul, and our physical body. We are either law-abiding to those laws, or we're lawbreakers, wicked, evil people. If you break the laws in the physical nature, You've got problems in your body. You take in too much sugar, salt. You're not balanced. You're going to have problems. If you have an overload of trauma, hate, if you're confused, all your thoughts are perversions, we're going to have issues with you. If your spirit is not free, filled with this light, Glowing out, out of your words, out of your spirit. If you just sit in a room, getting his light that King David saw shine out of you, what would people say about you? What kind of fire is coming out of you? Just your presence, does it illuminate the darkness? King David is saying there's a judge that's going to judge all of the things you think about. Every thought, imagination, every image, every desire, every hope, every unsaid word, every dream, 
And he says the wicked, they are going to be snared in their own work. Verse number 17. The wicked shall be spiritually turned into, taken to, live it in hell, torment, spiritual separation from him, like going to jail and prison. And you, the people themselves, the nations, by your own words and deeds and thoughts and actions, you have forgotten the Lord, the God of the Holy Bible, the law, the Lord of King David. Oh, you might call on a God for help, but you don't mean King David's God. You might know the rules, but you break them. You know how I know? Because we watch you. We see you. Hear about you on the news. I hear about you from your children. So King David is saying, because you do wicked things, and the judge of the universe, the Lord, his Lord, has judged you, he will turn you into hell. Point you in that direction and you will walk. You might say your life is a living hell right now. Probably is. You will be in torment. Do you know that your body responds to your mind and its thoughts? If your soul is messed up, we'll call it your mental health. Your physical body is going to be messed up. Have issues. And when you do not live in righteous acts, have a righteous heart, one that's legal and lawful, peaceful, kind, loving, towards this Lord of King David and your neighbor and nature, he says you are wicked and you have forgotten him. Oh, you may believe in other gods because that's in your spirit. Somewhere deep in your soul, you know you're to be in a relationship with a God. You're to have something in relationship to an unknown thing. So we make ourselves, we make things our God. And he says, because of what you do, he already knows that your spirit is separated from him. When you live in a wickedness of your mind, your soul, your heart. Oh, you might look good from the outside. But he knows. And the judge will make a judgment. Verse number 18. For the spiritually needy shall not always be forsaken, forgotten. The expectations of the poor shall not perish forever. So he is saying those people who are spiritually needy, not physically, but spiritually, shall not always be forgotten. He remembers you're there. He knows your spiritual condition. The judge does. He has been told by a lawyer your condition spiritually. Pastor Deborah knows it. And so does your opponent. That's right. He knows too. But you won't be forgotten. Even if you get physically sent away to prison, jail, you live in torment, you live without any physical benefits and blessings, we will not forget you spiritually. We know your expectations. We know your hopes, your dreams. We know what you cry out for when you can't even speak. I can look in your eyes, hear it in your voice. We know 
and you shall not perish. You will not. There's a plan. A judgment's been already given. Somebody else took your place. Took your punishment. Paid a price for you. And you are his now. Even if you don't know it. But he does. And so do I. Verse number 19. King David is still talking to us. Let's keep listening. Arise, O Lord of Israel. Let not man, a human, an evil spiritual creature, being, prevail against you. Let the heathen be judged in your sight. I have to read these scriptures carefully. You have already been judged. You were found guilty spiritually. And somebody stepped up, laid down on their body on a barbed wire so you could cross a bridge. Somebody already said, I'll go for them. I know they're guilty, but they can't free themselves. And someone has to be punished. I'll go. And this other's life was given for you. So you could be set free. That was this Lord. The Lord sent him son. The son said, I will go for them, Father. They can't pay the price. They're too separated from you, too full of evil and wickedness. And we know that the only way back to you is through death, and rebirth. And they have to be reborn through blood and through death. But someone had to pay their price, take the judgment that you gave, that King David's Lord gave, guilty, death. And it was carried out by another one day, long ago, he gave his life for you. Not many gods are willing to do that. Not many sons, not many people. But that's why we love the soldiers, the policemen, the firemen, the rescuers. Why we love those who are willing to give their lives for somebody else. Could be a mama could be a papa, brother, sister, could be a neighbor, somebody you don't know has come to help you. We love them. Because in our, in our hour of need, when we cannot help ourselves, somebody comes with a strong arm, strong back, strong will, and a heart of love for us. Says, I got you. I'll take your place. We saw that even on the Titanic. Women and children first. 1,500 men died. So others could live. Soldiers see it every day. Secret service will take a bullet for those who they protect. People will run into the fire. People will run into gunfire, run to save others. And this Lord of King David, the God of Israel, his son, Christ Jesus, did that on a cross for your spirit 
to be free from this judgment. So it did not have to be turned into hell and tormented and separated from the great I am, the Lord of the Holy Bible anymore. This Christ Jesus became a heathen. He sinned not, but he took your sin, your rebellion, your evilness, wickedness, every evil thought that you have done. He said, put it on me. I will carry it. I will be the sacrifice for them. That through death would come a new life. That's right. Rebirth. The Hindus know it as reincarnation. You die in one life and you come back in another form. So here, the judge has judged you guilty. But once you learn that someone has taken your punishment, paid your price, and all you have to say is, thank you, and I accept that. Wonderful things happen to you. You'll be able to hear King David more clearer. Verse 20. Sorry about the tears, but I get very emotional about you. And this wonderful gift of freedom. That only the Lord of King David can give. Who is behind the reincarnation? What almighty God and Lord can make that possible? What law designed that? What judge said you could come back in another form? What judge said you had to die? Let's listen a little bit more. Verse 20. Spiritually put themselves, humanity, the wicked, in fear, O Lord. King David is really praying for you. Doesn't sound like it. But he wants you to be in fear of judgment. Of what your afterlife will be. What you'll be coming back to the world as. What will happen to you in death? What the verdict? The Egyptians, ancient Egyptians knew that the Pharaoh was going to go down into mm -hmm, the afterworld, the underworld, excuse me. And to keep the world at bay, he had to fight demons and spirits. And your heart would be judged by a feather. Yes. And it is a fearful time for many. So David is saying, as part of your judgment, you have to be put into fear. Many realize that when the police are coming after them, fire is on and death is staring them at the face or getting caught. King David is trying to help you. Mm -hmm. David goes on and says, put them, humanity, the wicked, in fear, O Lord, so that the nations, the people, you, may know themselves to be but men. Or you might think you're something, and you are spiritually, but your soul evil wicked thing I don't care how many righteous deeds you do or how good you look there are evil thoughts in your soul mm -hmm. so David is saying we got to help him put him in fear many people are afraid to die many people are afraid to get caught they live stressed out lives. 
They have secrets they hide. And then if they can live a life where nobody finds out, their dreams can give them away. I can look, so can God. So David is saying, we got some issues, and God, please deal with them. Deal with the people that have the issues. And when you are a righteous judge and you judge them, people will know that you are the Lord of King David. Now, that was already done. All of humanity in our present condition was judged evil and wicked. But those who accept this gift of freedom, this sacrifice of Christ Jesus, this lamb, they are set free spiritually. The spiritual separation, the judgment on them is gone because it went to another. And then a new life in reincarnation, sort of, begins. And you have to learn and grow and be taught. Be under a teacher, a master. You must study and learn and grow up because you're a baby. Mm -hmm. So here, in this word of encouragement, which happens to be number 22 in the year of 2023. We're just learning a little bit more about King David. About how he's trying to help you even now. And asking you that question. How is your Lord known? King David is known as a judge. A lawgiver. A righteous one. That he will make judgment. About your life. He's recording everything you do. Everything you say and think and dream. Is recorded. Written down in books. Will be brought into the courtroom of the universe. And exposed. To all of heaven. To all of hell. To all. Living creatures. That's right. The dogs will know what you do. What kind of person you are. The cats, the horses, the cattle, the sheep, the fish in the sea. Your deeds, your actions, your thoughts, who your Lord is will all be known. Can't hide it anymore. Can't hide behind the press. Can't hide behind anything or anybody. So King David is saying your word of encouragement is, let's ask ourselves a question. How is your Lord known? To you, to the world, to others. That's right. And that's where I'm going to leave it for today. This is my second recording already. Now I've got to go edit this. So ask yourself, how is your Lord? Do you even claim to have a Lord? King David said, I got a Lord, even though I'm a king. Even though I'm a king of Israel, I have a Lord over me. A judge. I can talk to him. And it's not a she. It's not a mama. It's not an animal. It's not half and half. It's not a man. It's not a custom. It's not family, culture. It's a God. A Lord. A judge. Not only is he the lawgiver, but he's the judge and the executioner. So King David's trying to help us. We got to get on the right track. So you be encouraged. Let's go take a deep dive into you. Do your thoughts, your actions, your beliefs, your concepts, your feelings. You may not be able to see your spirit, but I can. And I can tell you about it. So you be encouraged. Somebody's out here, a master, a teacher, a spiritual shepherd like David to help you, Pastor Deborah. There's many others out there all around the world, out on social media, in books. But you got to get under somebody. You got to be a student. You got to be immersed in this stuff. Mm -hmm. Got to get to know 
the Lord, the judge of Israel, the Lord of King David. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time with you here in the garden, in the spirit, and over YouTube. We thank you that you are working through videos, social media, movies, books, life. You are trying to help us because you love us. You send our sacrifice to take our place. But you have to help us to understand what kind of creatures we are, who you are as Lord and judge, and that, yes, we will be judged. Maybe not in this life, but in the afterlife we will be. There's a day of judgment coming for all of us. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to help us. You don't want to have to turn us into hell, into spiritual separation from you, torment, to live in fear, being found out. So help us, Father, to learn about you as Lord and judge, about the laws that we have broken, sinned against, trespassed, about the consequences of our behavior and what you think. And help us to realize we need to look at ourselves and be judged. Our deeds, our thoughts, our actions. We need to look at our spirit, our soul, our physical body. Make a judgment on us, Father. Help us. For we are dirty, evil, and wicked. And we need to be cleansed. Birthed anew, reincarnated into a new being, a new creature, then help us to grow in the name of Christ Jesus. Father, I know you'll help us. You'll fulfill your Isaiah 61 and 62 in our lives. You'll give us a Hebrews 4.12, a spiritual circumcision, so that we can be about your work and receive this light into our spirit. We thank you, Father, that through King David, your holy Bible, through his words to us written long ago, you're helping us so that you and your righteousness can be seen coming out of us and people can say, we are righteous, we are pure and holy, we have been reincarnated, we have been reborn, a new creature. Not that old one. So thank you, Father. And we love you for it. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. Okay, I'll see you next time on the next Word of Encouragement with Pastor Deborah on the Hidden Kingdoms channel here on YouTube. And it should be number 23. We're moving along. I'm getting back into recording. So we hopefully can get through this year with lots of spiritual teaching videos. Okay, bye-bye.